twerk the center, twerk the center, twerk the center, and his little elf crew, twerk the center, twerk the center, twerk the center, and his reindeer too, twerk the center, twerk the center, twerk the center, you know what to do, twerk the center, twerk the center, twerk the center, just twerk the center. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Will on a Whim. Today we are finally okay, going to come through with those no BS hair growth tips. But first, go ahead and click that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future videos. So today, I really wanna just distill, okay? I wanna distill all of these hair growth tips that I think are floating out there, and I wanna distill them all into this one video so that you all have a tangible, a palpable, a crunchable, get into these words, sis. A video that you can take with you and refer back to so that you have some tips that will actually help you grow your hair. These are tips that I use and live by all the time to grow my hair. I've been growing my hair out for about it's gonna be almost four years in January, which means that I started growing my hair out when I was 20 years old in college, sophomore year. It's been a long, long time coming. But due to the tips that I'm gonna tell you all today, I was able to grow my hair from girl the scalp to, uh, to somewhere. I haven't really done a real length check in a while. But here's my hair, okay, here it is, here it goes. It's in these braids, so it's actually a bit shorter than it actually appears right now, but we're just gonna go ahead and hop into these tips. Tip number one is to use water. Use water in your hair. There's this weird myth that I even heard when I was younger that black people don't use water in their hair, but I'm here to tell you that that's a total falsitude, okay? Is my, are my lips chapped? See, I need some water, that's what I need. Water is the ultimate moisturizer. It keeps your hair elastic, it feeds your scalp exactly what it needs in order to help create the hair, the literal physical hair that comes out of your hair follicles. If we really back to the fundamental structure of your hair, your hair has this cortex and then it has this cuticle layer around it and the cuticle basically is like armor for the soft part of your hair and the cuticle will open and close in response to heat okay so if you use lukewarm water basically heated water you'll be able to open up your hair's cuticle and what that then allows is for products to go ahead and enter and get all cozy inside of your hair nourish your hair and make sure that it continues to stay elastic and it will minimize breakage okay and that helps you retain length and keep growing your hair so go ahead and pick you up some water okay also I've heard that people have hard water. Water that I think has like some minerals in it. I actually need to look up an official definition of hard water. Over time, minerals will build up underneath your cuticle and it'll start pushing out water and your hair over time will get crunchy, dry, <laughs> basically a hot cheeto. What I would do is I would get my filtered water. I have sort of like a little Keurig that I put into the sink and I fill it up with water and all of that water goes through a filtration system and it'll take out all of the hard minerals and all the gross stuff. Take away that nasty weird <laughs> like aluminum taste. If I have hard water coming out of my shower and I'm washing my hair in that, I'll go ahead and just substitute that water with my filtered water. Okay, moving on to tip number two. You need to trim your hair and stop being in denial, okay? A lot of us wanna carry the length that we've been growing and working so hard for. We wanna continue, you know, holding on to that length, but sometimes the ends of your hair get dry, they get poofy, they get rough, and that's because those ends are damaged. You wanna make sure that all the hair on your head is healthy at all times, okay? So a lot of people say trim your hair every six months, three months, but honestly, listen to your hair. Look at your hair, feel your hair. You'll know when it's time to trim your hair. And I think I have a video on that, so I'll link that up here, but go ahead and trim that hair off. If it feels damaged, if it feels rough, and it's not retaining moisture the way the rest of your hair strand is, then it's time to cut it off. Don't hold on to it. Trim without denial. It'll prevent it from sort of splitting all the way up to the hair follicle and falling out. Tip number three is to find products that actually work for your hair, okay? Not for homegirl's hair that you saw on YouTube, not for my hair that you see on my channel, but for your hair. You can take someone else's advice on products and recommendations, and you can filter those recommendations through what you already know about your hair. I like to recommend products that I think will work for most hair, okay? So if you have thicker hair like me, most of the products that I'm recommending will most likely work for you. But you really do have to make sure that you're finding products that really work for you, okay? So if you know that your hair prefers a thicker cream or even like a lighter cream, make sure you take that into consideration when you're doing your hair. All of these products are supposed to penetrate your cuticle, coat your cuticle, it's supposed to make your hair more elastic, prevent breakage, nervous your hair. So make sure you're looking for those things. Now how do you find out what your hair likes? You have to try around, okay? You have to shop around. And that, I think, hurts a lot of people because hair products cost a lot of money. And when I was starting out, I just sort of like stuck with one product and I was using that, but it was damaging me in the long run because that one product that I was using wasn't doing much for my hair. Go ahead and try different products and make sure you're finding products that make your hair feel moisturized, okay? It's important to notice the change in your hair when you put a product in your hair. If it's moisturized, if, it, if the curls are popping, if it's more elastic, you see less 
breakage over time, less shedding, then those products are good for you. And you have to pay attention to that. You can't just put plop some stuff in your hair and just forget to pay attention to how your hair's reacting to those products. Your hair is teaching you things all the time about itself. So just pay attention a little bit, take some notes. And when you're out shopping for products, look for certain ingredients, look for different consistencies, and you'll be good to go. Okay, so this next tip is to massage your scalp. Get in there with your fingers, your bed, the pads of your fingers, and just massage your scalp because that will stimulate blood flow. When there's something tangling up there, okay, your brain's like, send some blood there, see if everything's okay. <laughs> Everything that you eat is broken down into nutrients and it enters your bloodstream and they go and they, you know, nurture all of the cells in your body. If you sort of, you know, massage your scalp, stimulate that area, your heart will help pump some blood up there and your follicles will get those extra nutrients every once in a while, okay? Every time you go ahead and stimulate your scalp. You can do this in the shower, you can do this, you know, when you have that twist out and you can just get in there after a hard day of work. You may not notice the effects of that because there's so many factors that go into making your hair grow, but over time, you'll definitely see some growth. The next tip is knowing that protecting your hair does not mean war. It doesn't mean going to battle. That doesn't mean taking your hair and like just braiding it up real quick, doing so much to your hair all the time that you think you're protecting it, but in the long run, you're not. Take your time with your protective styles, okay? Make sure your hair is super moisturized before you go into a protective style. Whether that's a wig, whether that's a weave, whether that's a lace front, braid, twist, anything okay faux locks faux anything make sure that your hair is super moisturized because the whole point is to make sure that your hair is elastic protected and bound together in a way that's going to keep that moisture in there you don't want to you know be out here battling your hair bopping up your hair because <laughs> you will flop your hair will flop it will end up breaking your hair off over time don't pull your hair into these like tight protective styles because you'll rip out especially um at the perimeter of your hair those follicles are pretty delicate and you don't want to rip those out so the next tip as you heard in the last one is to deep condition your hair deep conditioners tend to have um ingredients whose molecules are smaller than that of regular conditioners or other products and so they're able to penetrate your cuticle easier and deeper and so they really do nourish your hair so if you use a mask treatment every week you'll be able to fortify your hair for the upcoming week and it'll decrease breakage and shedding and all of that stuff and it'll also nurture your hair it'll give your hair the nutrients that it needs in order to you know continue producing healthy hair so we're just gonna keep this going girl this is rapid fire <laughs> the next tip is stress relievers a lot of people don't really take this into account but stress causes hair loss there's a lot of studies that show that once you're stressed out okay your hair actually reacts in a way that pushes forward the hair's growth cycle and it allows for basically your hair to shed more quickly people during like exam time during those times a lot of people will experience higher amounts of shredding shredding shedding but also um when you're doing your hair and you're stressed out in a physical more immediate sense you're not as protective over your hair as you think you are so if i'm angry girl right and terrell just like bumped me in the hallway and i'm just like upset because i got like three papers due terrell just bumped me he didn't even say sorry and i'm like oh i just i and i also need to get my hair done so i'm like in the bathroom and i'm like okay <laughs> let's get this john fixed let's get this right you're not really being soft and caring and loving to your hair as you think you are right so it's important to have stress relievers. One, for not speeding up your hair's growth cycle, and two, for making sure that you're being polite to your hair and yourself. I like to go on walks, whether it's cold outside, whether it's warm outside. I bundle up when it's cold, and I wear my booty shirts when it's hot. The next tip is something that I know you didn't do last night, okay? You didn't wear your hair scarf, did you? Now, some of y'all might be like, heck yeah, girl, I wore my hair scarf, but did it fall off in the middle of the night? Yes, it did, sis. No, I'm kidding. I know some of you wear your hair scarves. Um, I wear my hair scarf every single night. I wear a few actually, okay? And the first one is gonna be satin because satin does not absorb the moisture out of your hair at night and it keeps that moisture in your hair and locks it in and ensures basically that your hair is gonna stay elastic. I keep bringing up that term because elasticity with your hair is super important to minimize breakage and that's what we are talking about in this video. We're minimizing breakage so that we can increase the length of our hair. So I'll wear my hair scarf. Um, then I'll wear on top of that my Hergeman Hair Satin Bonnet, which I think I don't have at arms reach right now but uh you've seen it in a few videos that is really snug it has an elastic band so that it sort of stays snug on my head 
all night. Get your scarf, girl, and wear it every single night because we all know a lot of us like to, you know, flipping and flopping like a pancake in a pan. And you want to make sure that, you know, you're not causing excess friction against your hair and your sheets because that physical stress on your hair could also cause breakage right then and there. And you don't want that. The next tip is about eating, okay? It's about vitamins, okay? A lot of us know that there's this supplement around town, you know, called biotin. Biotin is sort of a vitamin that helps promote hair growth. It's important to the factors in your hair follicle that produce the physical hair. It's a supplement that you can buy and you can take every day. Um, I take a multivitamin. It doesn't, I don't know if it has biotin in it or not, but I take a multivitamin because I'm a vegetarian and I want to make sure that I'm getting all of my nutrients. Um, but at the same time, you can get biotin from just foods that you would eat on a regular basis, okay? Or maybe not. Biotin is actually found in wheat. It's found in eggs. It's found, found in um, a lot of meats. Broccoli. It's found in broccoli. It's found in a, a, a ton of things. You can get biotin from your food groups. You don't have to necessarily go out and buy a supplement. Supplement. There are like hair and nail supplements that have biotin in it um, and you can do that You can try it out, but I don't necessarily think for me that they're gonna really show a difference if you don't have that supplement and you're um, Malnourished in that sort of area if you use biotin then you'll see a difference But if your body already has biotin girl, it's an extra biotin. You're just gonna literally just basically pee it out. <laughs> like, that's just the reality of that. Also, drink your water. Water is just like an all around, like magical thing that you should drink. It helps your skin, helps your hair, helps just about everything. So go ahead and drink you some water. Let's move on to the next tip. Genetics do play a factor in hair growth, okay? So a lot of us think that sort of certain people grow faster hair than others. We all actually, studies show, grow hair at the same rate, okay? Obviously, some people are gonna be above that rate, some people are gonna be below that rate, but on average, we all grow hair at the same rate. Now, a lot of people come at me and they say, you're a man, you grow hair faster than others. It's a whole bunch of things. They like assume I'm mixed and they say, your hair is only growing because you're mixed. And like, oh, it's like, girl, I'm black, I'm blackity black, black. And yes, I'm a man, but we all grow hair at the same rate, okay? Just about, all right? But what does play a bigger factor in whether or not you're gonna length okay is how fine or how coarse your hair is okay and obviously like how well you take care of either of those textures so coarse hair is basically just hair that has a thicker cuticle the more layers of cuticle you have the more protection you have of your hair and the less breakage you'll see the finer your hair is which is my hair is a, has a fine texture you'll basically have a thinner hair strand because you don't have as many layers of cuticle and so it's harder for your hair to retain length so genetics do play a factor in length retention not necessarily hair growth but length retention okay because if you have a coarser hair versus a finer hair you'll experience different ways that you have to protect your hair and the last tip okay is to love your hair if you don't love your hair girl you're not going to treat it right if you don't feel like your hair is uh, beautiful in its own right okay no matter where it lies on the hair spectrum you won't appreciate uh, the journey of it all and you won't really want to do anything to make it grow okay so if you are constantly chasing somebody else's hair texture or curl pattern then it's going to be hard for you to pay attention to what makes your hair healthy there are plenty of people out there who can serve as inspiration from 4c to 1a no matter what hair you have okay there are plenty of people out there who have inspired me, you know, and I don't even have, obviously I don't have like every hair texture flying around on my head, but there are so many inspirations out there. And I think that all you have to do is really just like tread on your own journey and figure out what works for you. Yeah, I just want to mention this real quick. I came up here on YouTube because I felt like I didn't see many people with in my hair texture up here on YouTube um, who could give me tips, who could um, help me with my journey. So I wanted to like insert myself into this narrative. And if you have hair that you don't see, here on YouTube, start a YouTube channel. I encourage you. That's the last tip, okay? I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you all like got something out of this. I wanted to add a sense of sort of like imperativeness to this video to make sure you all knew that this was like important. Like these tips are important. So thank you all for watching. I hope you all like this video. Give this video a big old thumbs up if you did and click that subscribe button for more tips and tricks and acrobatic acts i don't know <laughs> don't forget to follow me on facebook twitter instagram and snapchat i'll see all of you back here real soon for another episode of will on a whim but until then bye santa claus he makes a brown tall before christmas day he be at parties malls and even parades but with so much work i don't know how he does it but this twerk i'm about to give him gonna be his christmas present twerk the sense twerk the sense twerk the sense and his little elf crew twerk the sense